Does pain, stiffness, or weakness hold you back from walking longer distances like you used to? Difficulty walking can be common, but it doesn't have to stay this way. Whether you are looking to get back to walking miles, if even just a few steps right now seem really challenging, or you're preparing for a lot of walking on an upcoming trip, there is hope. In this video, I'm going to share with you my top five strategies to help you increase your confidence and unlock walking longer distances. Strategy number one involves a warm up. If you were gonna go do a workout routine, odds are you're going to include a warm up. But if you're going to go out on a walk, warm ups are typically skipped. Without getting your joints and muscles moving first, you may experience earlier onset pain, a wonky gait due to stiffness, and earlier onset fatigue, making distances very difficult. The good news is you can warm up your joints and muscles in just a couple of minutes before you head out. Here are three of my favorite warm up movements that other followers have used, particularly when on trips, to help them prepare their body to walk longer distances. This first one is just a simple forward and backward step. It helps to loosen up the hip joint and helps to get blood flowing to the muscles of the legs. Start by standing on one leg. I'm gonna start on the left side and take a big step forward with my right and then back. Notice there's no pause in the middle. The goal here is about 10 to 20 repetitions on one side, and then you will switch to the other side. As you get more warm, try to take larger steps, and then it can add a balance component in it as well. The second one is arguably one of my favorite. It's a simple side step. When it comes to walking, the outside muscles of your hips are incredibly important to help keep your hips stable and actually help to keep the knees where they need to be. Moving sideways helps to activate those muscles and get them working properly to support you when walking. For this one, we're looking for 20 to 30 repetitions, honestly, whatever feels good to you. Now this last one is warming up muscles that are very important for how your feet move, taking larger steps and picking your foot up. It is a heel raise, lifting both heels, mixed with a toe raise. Heel raise is working the calf muscles, the muscles in your lower leg. When you lift the toes up, it's actually working the shin muscle, the muscle that helps you pick up your foot as you're walking. We're looking for 10 to 20 total repetitions here. And for me, one repetition is a heel raise and a toe raise together. For a warm up to be effective, you may just need one to two sets of about two to three movements. Depending on what your body needs, what joints feel stiff that day, what muscles maybe feel tight, that can dictate what movements you are using. Feel free to use the three I showed you or choose three that work best for you. For strategy number two, this is a muscle group that doesn't necessarily come top of mind when you're looking at improving your walking, and that is core strengthening. Giving some attention to your core can help to skyrocket your confidence and stability when walking, and it can also help to support an upright posture and even reduce limping. I am all about bringing you the movements that bring you the best bang for your buck. When it comes to core, I'm not talking about crunches. I'm talking about looking at your core in a little bit of a different way. Your core helps to support your spine, but it also helps to optimize the positioning that your hips are in. When you don't have a lot of core engagement, you may find yourself in a position known as an anterior pelvic tilt, meaning you have an excessive arch in your low back. This puts your core muscles on stretch. It also impacts how tight certain leg muscles feel 
and how certain leg muscles are working. If you are in this position, it can be common to overuse certain muscles and they can become tight and irritated. Working your core with this exercise right here can help to bring your hips in a better position and also help to support your spine. All you need is a blank space on a wall. You'll stand up against a blank wall, then take a small step out with your feet. So your feet are now in front of you. The key part of this movement is finding the wall with your lower back. And what I mean by that is tilting your hips back. So right now, my lower back is in contact with the wall as well as my upper back and shoulder blades. Maintain this position the entire time. As you're just simply holding this, you may feel a slight activation in your core. You're using those core muscles to push your lower back into the wall. If you're not able to touch the wall from where you're standing, one way to make this easier is to walk your feet out another small step. The further your feet are in front of you, the easier this will be. Once you can find this position, take your arms down by your sides and simply raise one arm and then raise the other. If you do have limitations in shoulder mobility, just raise your arm as high as you feel comfortable. But what we're doing is now adding an arm movement that's challenging this position further. If you're doing this and your back is arched away from the wall, you are not getting the benefit. The good news is you can do this exercise during the day, especially if you're dealing with back pain, hip pain, stiffness. You can do this as part of a walking warm up. You can also do this as a cool down before bed or in the evening. Really, whenever your body is craving this and you remember to do it. The key here is aiming for 10 to maybe 30 repetitions. It's a big range, but I want you to go until you start to feel perhaps a little bit of fatigue. One to two sets typically should suffice for this movement. Especially if you're feeling stuck in unlocking walking longer distances, don't neglect your core strength. It can make more of a difference than you think. Strategy number three, you cannot afford to skip if you are looking to increase your walking distance. This strategy is all about getting stronger. You need your muscles to help support your joints and support them for a long time. There's a lot of repetition when you're walking certain distances and your body has to be prepared for that. One common thing that a lot of people report when they double and triple their walking times, they not only feel more confident, but they feel stronger. Now, there are lots of strengthening exercises, but if I had to pick one that I would prioritize that can directly help walking, I would choose a chair squat, standing up, and sitting down. And the reason for that is when you are doing this particular exercise, you are working lots of leg muscles at once. As you stand up, you're working your thighs, you're working your glutes, and even your hamstrings. All muscles that are incredibly important for walking. If you are struggling with this movement, you can raise the height of the seating surface, you can even use your arms. One thing I want you to focus on is making sure your knees stay in line with your ankles as you sit down and as you stand up. Try not to let your knees cave in. If they do, you need to make this exercise just a little bit easier to allow your body to be in the optimal position. Simply focusing on 10 to 20 repetitions for one to two sets can be very beneficial. And we're looking for two to three times per week. Strategy number four involves increasing your walking distance gradually. Think about for a moment, what is your goal distance when it comes to walking? And I want you to comment that down below. That's what you're going to be working towards. But in order to get there successfully, you have to increase your current walking distance in a way that allows your joints to adapt and not flare up your pain. One strategy is to increase your walking distance by only a couple of minutes each time. 
This can allow your body to have time to react and not push your body over that activity threshold. It can be hard to slow things down, but it can be incredibly powerful in helping you actually achieve your goal. An example that might help with this is if you can currently walk 10 minutes comfortably and without triggering a flare up, take that distance and start to gradually add one to two minutes each time and then assess how your body responds. So say the next time you go out for a walk, you walk for 11 or 12 minutes. Come back. If your body recovers fine, you don't experience significant pain, then the next time you go out, you might be able to walk for 12 or 13 minutes. It is trial and error sometimes, and it can be a pretty lengthy ladder, but trusting the process is incredibly important. You are here likely because what you have tried in the past or are currently trying isn't getting you to where you want to be. Slowing it down can be the key you need to start unlocking your distance. This last strategy is all about listening to your body. Your body sends pain signals, maybe some signals of stiffness or tightness because it is trying to tell you something. These signals may indicate what you are doing is too much or the way that you're moving is not quite optimal. Normally, a lot of people just try to ignore these signals or keep pushing through the pain, the stiffness, in hopes that one day it'll get easier. You have to take these signals and do something about them. One common solution if you do start to experience pain or stiffness when you are out for a walk is to stop and take a short break, if feasible. Another effective strategy is also just doing one or two simple movements or stretches, allowing those muscles to relax for a moment before they go work again. Another thing to note is what your body can do today may not be what your body could do yesterday or what your body can do tomorrow. You may experience a series of ups and downs, especially if you're dealing with osteoarthritis or joint pain. Not every day may be the same. If you continue to try to force progress, force longer distances when your body is not prepared, it can set you back further and further away from your goal. So remember, if you experience pain, stiffness, think what is my body trying to tell me and how can I adapt? If you would like some help on this journey, I have a three day free walking challenge that would be perfect for you. What I'd like you to do is click on this circle right here and it will take you to three follow along workouts with me that will help to address these strategies we just talked about. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can keep coming back for more tips and tricks on how to adventure with arthritis. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.